Do you want to know the secrets to becoming wildly successful? We went on location to talk with wine mogul Chris Perriman. In this interview, he shares his unique point of view on what it takes to be at the top of your game in both life and in business. In this incredibly insightful episode, we get deep into business, marketing, entrepreneurship, confidence, what it takes to be wildly successful, and so much more. Welcome to the LifeWorks Podcast. I grew up in the restaurant industry, and so talking to a restaurant tour that says my wine is expensive, I go, let's run some simple numbers. You buy my wine for, say, $10 a bottle, and you sell it for $30 a bottle. You're making 20 bucks, I make 10 bucks, and you're saying my wine's expensive. You hold it for two weeks, I've held it for three years. So, Mr. Restaurant Tour, make a cheeseburger, fill up a warehouse, hold three years inventory, temperature control it, don't let your staff eat it, right, right. and make a very small margin, and I'm going to buy it from you after three years and sell it for three times what I paid for it in two weeks and complain that I'm not making enough money. Uh, restaurants are so much fun. <laughs> to make a bottle of wine is, is more expensive than it is to go to a restaurant. You go to a restaurant and you buy a meal, and obviously the, the cost of that product or the plate is a lot less. Their margin of food is similar to the margin of a winery from a retail standpoint. But they don't have to carry for three years, and they don't have a lot of the costs and disciplines of all that we do with warehousing. Thomas Jefferson wrote about many wineries going across Europe. Every one of them is still in business today. Virginia has about 300 wineries. In the last 40 years, 90% of them are still open. That have opened. So we've opened 350 wineries, and 300 are still in business. Name an industry that has done that. It takes so much effort, thought, perseverance, will to open a winery and to make it to where you're going to be there in the first year. And if you make it the first year and you got your set together, you'll probably be there 10. If you're there 10, you'll be here like me with 30 years later, and you love it. In marketing, people talk about, here's my product, you should buy it, or here's my product, it's healthy, it's good for you, and I think you'll really appreciate it, and our value quality relationship is better than the other guys. We get silver medals, and for bronze medal pricing, we're really good. Mm -hmm. Okay. I believe in this product. I think this is the best thing for you. It's healthy. I'm 134 years old, and uh, the reason we make this is, my passion behind this product is, this is why we do this. You might like it too. And I think that's what Apple does. And that's our Kool-Aid as well. Our Kool-Aid is here's our passion. Here's what we do. Here's our knowledge. I've been to 30 countries in the wine industry. I've read about 600 plus wine books. And I'll show you my wine book collection. Knowledge of that is hopefully the wisdom of connecting the dots. Mm -hmm. And so when you can share that passion, now it becomes tangible. And our tangibility is a bottle of wine that pays for the laborer and the work and the vines and all the work that we do. But really what we sell is a story. Mm. And what we sell is our passion and what we sell is uh, the memory. So our goal is when you come here and we can identify with you and you can identify with us our story and you take a bottle of wine home with you and you drink it, share it with a loved one, give it to a friend, mm -hmm. that memory trigger is our success. What do you think are some of the biggest misconceptions about being an entrepreneur? That it's about ego. I argue it's about pride. That you don't get a lot being an entrepreneur. You give a lot. Mm. People think you don't know you and don't know the life that you end up taking. So I argue you give a giving. You give a lot more. But the books say that 13% of the people are what it takes to be an entrepreneur or whatever that is. And most people like to wake up in the morning, know what they're going to do, have a box to work within. Here's what I'm going to wear. Here's what I'm going to go. It's great. I wish I could do that. I can't do that. I wake up and design what people do and what we're going to do. So in my work world, I start thinking about three months out. I work three months to a year and a half out is where my brain is. Our managers for our wineries, we have 12 or 13 managers. They work two or three weeks to maybe two or three months out. Maybe longer depending on their job. Winemaking and events are going to be further out. And then the staff are working this week. And when you ask me what's happening next week, I have no clue. If you want to know what's happening six months from now, a year from now, I'm the guy to go to. That's how I think. 
entrepreneur is the ideas guy that puts a hundred ideas into 10 that can work and three that stick to the wall and gets them implemented so other staff can follow through. Being in business isn't about money. It's about being able to do it again next year. Profitability isn't about anything but being able to do it again next year. Our forklift truck is in trouble right now. $8,100 fix. Being profitable isn't a big thing. Being profitable is, I need 8100 bucks to fix my forklift truck this week. <laughs> like, I need a forklift truck or bond next to it. It isn't about the money. It's about uh, the creativity. And I'm not one that easily is told, I want you to go do this. I don't like telling people to go do this. Let's come up with an idea about what we're going to do. And here's what I want you to do, and here's what I'm going to do, and here's what you're going to do, and let's go climb a mountain together. And if somebody has a better idea, great, let's hear it. If you don't have a better idea, follow mine. As an entrepreneur, it's about leadership, empowering people to follow your lead, but not in a militant way to where mine is the only way. Mine is the way to tell there's a better way. And I don't care about authorship. If you or anybody else on our team says, I want to do this differently, great, let's talk about it. This is my idea, it doesn't mean it's the best one, but it's the one we're going to keep and tell there's a better one. So I think entrepreneurship is in surrounding yourself with people generally to allow that to happen. With someone who has had such incredible success as you have, was there anything that you gave up to have that? Yeah, I've got thick walls, I've got tall walls emotionally. Mm -hmm. And that came from my upbringing. And I think to be an entrepreneur, when you're sticking your neck out, you're saying, I want to do this and I'm, going to, I'm committed to do this and I'm taking your paycheck and we're going to do this together. Mm -hmm. um, you got to have thick skin. And so I would rather think of the good than the bad. I've given up a lot. I've lost a lot and I've gained a lot. And I like to think of what I gained, which is the ability to be unemployable. <laughs> when I read the right mind. <laughs> I'm going to boss? Are you kidding me? And that uh, the opportunity to still do this, and hopefully for the look ahead of 20 years. So what have I lost? My wife has a lovely place in Florida, and we're planning to go in there two months ago, and six weeks ago, and a month ago, and last week, and we have given up four times our plans to go to Florida in the last two months because of our commitments. People say, wow, it's nice to have a house in Florida. I go, yeah, hi. We, we went 13 months without seeing it last year. There's only 12 months in a year. You know? Corporate people work nine to five, mm -hmm. Monday to Friday. Yeah. I wake up and think about my work. I go to bed sleeping about my work. But I can also take away in the middle of the daytime to go swimming, to go do this, to go do that. So I think a successful entrepreneur is designing a workload that works without them. Every one of us is expendable. Every one of us is moral. Every one of us can come out. So what I've learned to do is to get away from here. Mm -hmm. And when I'm here, I'm here intensely, when I'm here a lot. When I'm gone, I can't be contacted. So my life in the last many years has been up on a sailboat for three or four or five weeks. No cell phone, no computer. And I'm off the South Pacific. I'm not delivering sailboats. I like to deliver sailboats because it's intense, it's called constantly on, you're always thinking about it, you're always doing it, yeah. and the distractions are not here. And when I come back, I don't have a job. Everybody's doing great, everyone has a job, but I come back, I've got for a month on sale, <laughs> they go, hey, Chris is back. I go, what do you want me to do? I, I don't have a job. Yeah. So the managers have to hire me back, give me <laughs> jobs to do, and I want to see how resourceful they are. I want to see how they give me projects. I want to see how they follow through. I want to see how they define it. I want to see what their definition of success is. And I want my managers to give me a job. And then at the end of time, we all learn. And then I take over again. And then the managers go, go hop on a sailboat again. Go away, go away. And, and that becomes, rather than going away for the weekend, I got to go away for a month at a time. And that's the reason I go away for a month at a time. And I think it's important. Because everyone needs to grow. Everyone needs pride. We've got great staff here. We have very mature staff. And I think the, the pride is still is so important. That's what we strive for. Is being an entrepreneur something that you would recommend to everyone? I don't recommend anything to anybody but breathing.
No. If you don't want to make decisions, be the proactive communicator. Saying here's the definition, being a program manager. It may not be for you. I got to design work for a lot of other people. And I got to think about, am I going to buy a new forklift truck or get this one fixed? Are we going to make a sparkling wine this year? Should we make a dessert wine? You look at the business analytics, you look at the direction of a company. So I'm the guy at the wheel of a big boat. Mm -hmm. Are we turning left, going straight, going right, and slowing down, speeding up? It's like the engineer of a train is the one responsible for everything, but doesn't have control of anything but the whistle. Most people, I think, want to, at some point or another, have the majority of life be programmed. I wake up when the sun comes up, have my coffee, have cereal, I go feed the goldfish, and pet the dog, and I'm going to go do what I do. Everything's important. There's no value difference. And come home at the end of the day feeling good about what I've done and feed the goldfish and pet the dog and play a game of tennis and watch TV or whatever it is. And then at the end of time, build that into something that's called a career. So part of being an entrepreneur is identifying gaps. Yes, And this is absolutely. something that you have been very astute at. As I've studied your background and your experience, you always found gaps in things and, and found ways to deliver on those. Tell us a little bit about how you think when you look at a situation and identify those gaps and, and identify those solutions. My wife and I walk into a room and there's 10 people and we looked at it for 30 seconds mm -hmm. and we walk out again and you ask each of us what we see we have seen different things yeah. most people walk into the room and say it's cold mm -hmm. how many people will do something about it you go to a restaurant mm -hmm. and i'm a restaurant manager and i go see 100 tables and 100 people and how was your meal have a good time anything i can do for you i'm the manager great to see you thank you have a good time big smiles everybody's happy and you walk away as a manager and the table says Man, I've been waiting for ice water, my beer glass is empty, my fish was cold, and I'm waiting 20 minutes to get served. Mm -hmm. Why didn't you tell the manager? Why didn't you do something about it? Mm -hmm. I think most people don't want confrontation, and most people think being a good entrepreneur is about confrontation. Mm -hmm. And I can be guilty of that too. I argue it's getting something done. Entrepreneurialism is filling in the gap, mm -hmm. acting upon the cracks that you see, mm -hmm. Some say exploiting, mm -hmm. I say fulfilling. So you see a gap and you want to fill it. And you can fill a small gap, you can fill a big gap. When people are not next to each other, they want to communicate with each other. And so the telegraph was a huge gap filler. Mm -hmm. That the telephone became a big gap filler. The cellular telephone became a big gap filler. Huge. Now you want information. People talk about we're in the information age. We're not in the information age, we're in the decipher age. Mm -hmm. Ask me a question. Why is the sky blue? Why, why is the sky blue? According to Scientific American, more of the sunlight entering the atmosphere is blue than violet, however, and our eyes are somewhat more sensitive to blue light than to violet light, so the sky appears blue. Wow. There's your answer. We're not in the information age, we're in the decipher age. What do you do with the information to know when the sky's blue? I'm amazed how many people ask a question that it's right here. Albert Einstein said, somebody once asked him, what's your telephone number? He goes, I don't know. <laughs> why not? He goes, it's in the phone book. Go look it up in the phone book. I'm not going to waste my time knowing the phone number. I got stuff to think about. I want to ask you about you personally. People that you are closest to, people that you surround yourself with, what are they like? Intelligent, honest, direct. Don't have to agree with anybody. Got to be respectful and listen. I always respect intelligence and respect people's views. And that's how you learn. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the teacher learns and the student teaches. So people with open minds that can communicate. We all make mistakes, just learn from them. Learn from each other. Yeah. <laughs> learn why the sky's blue. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. So in terms of what it takes to be wildly successful, how would you mentor somebody in, in that? What's the advice that you would give them? Define success, which will take another hour, but I think from there, you could extrapolate out. If people are th saying successful, I have my own company and yeah. have my name on it. If that's success, if that's your definition, hard work, intelligence, do your homework, know the industry, 
Mm -hmm. There's the old saying that to do something well takes 10,000 hours. And that's playing the piano, that's speaking the language, that's learning to be a winemaker. That's five years at 2,000 hours a year. Mm -hmm. So it takes five years full time to do something good. If you're to own a restaurant, be a chef, you better work for some good chefs, you better travel, you better you know, spend your 10,000 hours learning before you say, I think I'm going to go be an airline pilot, which just doesn't really happen that way. Be curious. I think the most important attribute of mankind is curiosity. Mm -hmm. And all of our other attributes evolve from that curiosity. And they're good and bad. Mm -hmm. And they're active and proactive. And they're reactive. So from the curiosity, I'm curious why the sky is blue. What do you do about that question? Are you going to find the answer? Are you going to learn something? Are you going to grow into it? Are you going to ignore it? Will it bug you for the rest of your life? Can you make a living doing it? Why is it important that the sky is blue? How many colors of blue are there? The Navajo Indians have 27 different words for the name rain. Curiosity taught me that because I thought it was cool because how many words in the English language? Downpour, deluge, mist, mm -hmm. cats and dogs, maybe. But <laughs> So how, how many words do we have to talk about rain? The Navajo language is very small. Yeah. But rain is very important in the language. Mm -hmm. So how can we learn from that to express ourselves and express things that don't exist yet? So I, I like those types of conversations to make you think. Yeah. That's why I like sailboats. Sailboats make, make you think. It goes very sure. slow and you got to think the whole time, sure. just like life. What is the greatest lesson you've ever learned either in life or in business patience life is unfair life is full of problems what's for dinner <laughs> <laughs> um because yeah. life is not fair life is not true life is mm. a huge problem what you plan for your life is not what happens Life is what happens in between your plans. Adaptability, knowing that at the end of the day, there's a glass of water, glass of wine, a hug, a piece mm -hmm. of food, a stormy night, sleeping alone in a storm, going, why the hell am I here? Yeah. Tomorrow's another day. So enjoy the rain because sometimes there's a drought, you know? Right. What, what can you take? <laughs> it's, uh, right. My mom taught me to be fearless. And I think not being afraid, but being curious is far better than being afraid of anything. A lot of people have tattoos these days. Yeah. And the difference between the scar and the tattoo is that a scar has a much better story. <laughs> <laughs> how did your parents teach you how to be fearless? By making me do it myself and not being too close. Hmm. So I had paper routes as a kid. I sold avocados. I started a company washing the facades of a shopping center, the glass stores. Mm -hmm. If I wanted something, I had to go earn it. In 1974, there was a drought in California and I had a skateboard. I was a big skateboard head. And the urethane wheels came out from the clay wheels and right. I saved all my money and I only had enough to buy three urethane wheels and I wanted my fourth <laughs> urethane wheels and mom, I, I need five dollars to get my, my skateboard perfect. She goes, go out and earn it. Go out, knock on some doors and cut some grass. So here's what you say when you knock on the door. Be respectful, tell them what you can do, what you can't do, what mm -hmm. the price is, and be honest about that and see if you can go earn your five bucks to get your skateboard back. Three days later, I got my skateboard. Yeah. And everyone's lawn was clean. And I got pride. I go, you know what? I cut that grass. Mm. And next week they say, hey, want to come cut the grass? I go, no, man, I'm going to go skateboard. <laughs> <laughs> How do you want to be remembered? Being helpful to mankind. Mm -hmm. I know it sounds really altruistic, but yeah. in reality, Leave things better than how you find them. So you and I could talk all day and, and I want to leave this relationship better than we found it. Yeah. And I can only use my measuring stick. I can't use your measuring stick. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you that you're going to find things better at the end of the day. I hope it is, but I know I can. My life's ambition was not to be a wine guy. I may not know what it was. Maybe it was chosen for me. You have that belief set. I don't know. Leaving things better than I found it. Mm -hmm making people think a little bit more, making people maybe a little bit better. Yeah. Chris and I continued our conversation as we walked about the vineyard, discussing the deep appreciation of wine. We even invited some friends to join us. 
If you'd like to see that part of the interview, look for the previous episode, Wine Masterclass. As I reflect on this interview, I think about one of Chris's last thoughts. In order to be at the top of your game, we certainly need to put in the work now, and a whole lot of it. But we also need to think about the future beyond us, and leave things better than we found them. In these chaotic times, this is a principle that we all need to listen to. Thank you for sharing this experience with me. See you soon. Hey guys, thanks for watching and listening. If you enjoyed this episode, hit the subscribe button and you'll never miss an episode. And check out some of these other clips from the podcast.